Hey guys, we relocated our guest bathroom into what is now used to be a closet. We finished all the drywall, including the texture. We laid this beautiful hexagon tile and I'm sharing all the details how to do it in the right way without screwing up. And the most important part, we hooked up all new electrical. A lot of stuff we covered, so without wasting any more time, let's get into this video. Let's go. All right, guys, welcome back to part two of the guest bathroom makeover. Yes. Last week, we did what in the bathroom? Demo day. We did... Framing? Framing and plumbing. And plumbing. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Crazy transformation, knocking out a closet, moving the bathroom into that closet. It's... it's yeah. That happened like mid-demo as well. <laughs> oh, and by the way, she hasn't quit on me yet. She's working with me. We're this doing is fine. a project number two. We'll see. S still married. We're doing great. You scorch the very top. You're basically just cutting paper. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Boom. Breaks in half. And then at that point, all we do is... Boom. The rest of the paper. I got it. You can cut the other part out, Kyle. What happened here? Did you get mad? Yes. Never seen drywall cut with knife or scissors, have you? Neither have I. But the good news is you're like, oh no, the drywall's done. No. It's not. Closet side. Well, the old bathroom side now. Hey, wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. What HelloFresh is, it's a lifesaver. We have a family, three kids, we work, both of us, we don't have time to think about what to make for dinner. So this is where HelloFresh is heaven sent. They deliver mouth-watering, fresh, pre-measured ingredients straight to your door. It takes all the guesswork out. HelloFresh is America's number one home delivery meal kit. They make cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. HelloFresh offers a wide variety of quick meal options like 20 minute dinners or oven ready pizzas. They make living healthy easier with low-cal, carb smart, vegetarian, and pescatarian options every week. Plus, every recipe is packed with fresh produce sourced directly from farmers. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and prepping, so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes, or even 20 minutes with their quick and easy options. With HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients means there's less prep for you and less wasted food. And not to mention, HelloFresh's carbon footprint is 25% lower than of meals made from store-bought groceries. So do yourself a favor, head over to HelloFresh.com, use my promo code MrBuildIt14 to get 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, my promo code MrBuildIt14 to get 14 free meals, including free shipping. Now, let's get back into this video. We are gonna be doing some mudding. We're gonna be taping all the drywall joints. For that, we're gonna need the drywall tape. We're gonna need a drywall taping knife. The mix that we're gonna use, this is the drywall mix. Now, what's cool about this, the easy 90, that means it takes 90 minutes to harden. So this is accelerated significantly than the basic stuff. Create a nice sliver right between the joints. Get it right between the two seams. Give it a light press and start squeezing out the mud. The remainder can go right on top of that tape to give a better saturation. So now in case you're gonna do a uh, corner, the tape has a little perforated or creased already in the middle of it. And all you gotta do is just go with the crease. Don't fight the crease. We need a little backer board. So I'm gonna put this in the back with pocket holes, space it out accordingly. So what I mean by accordingly, these have to come out far enough that I still have about a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch, whatever the thickness of the tile back flush is gonna go on. We gotta make these connections. We'll use these little PEX connectors, go in there, cramp them together just like we did the rest of the plumbing. Hmm. Hmm. Why are we always matching? 
because we're cute, okay? <laughs> I'm just pretending like I know what I'm doing, not leaking. I'll have you put on these corners. Um, so you're just gonna basically hug it close like that. Mm -hmm. And then use nails, those special drywall nails. Hey, 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 hey. Take her easy, okay? <laughs> Afterwards, you have to blend everything out. So this is how wide this particular mud is. The paper is the bridge, right? So now we have to blend it out this way. And then after that, we're gonna blend it out even more to get rid of all these harsh transitions. Oh. To get rid of these harsh transitions. <laughs> try again. Let's try again. You just kind of brush it over so that I can follow you with a wider trowel to start blending the first coat. Mm. Cool? Cool. All right. All right, we're ready for our first float. Obviously this trowel is a little bit wider. We're gonna create a nice thin coat. I diluted this pretty thin, and then we're gonna keep the trowel laying closer against the drywall. So, just like that, nice firm press. And all we're doing is trying to get this blend going a little bit wider. For these transition pieces, the corner uh, angles, um, you will see they have a little lip on them. So essentially what you're doing is you're bringing a float of it to match this plane to that edge. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm gonna hit it with 220, actually 180, it's like uh, really lightly. All right, folks, one of the last things we do before we start hitting this puppy up with some texture is uh, we're doing a skim coat on anything that doesn't have existing texture on it. You can do one of two ways. You can either float it lightly, that's what I'm doing, there's not a lot of room, or you can get yourself like a painting pan with the rolling thing and they just roll on that skim coat. Just, it primes the drywall to actually ad ad adhere to and kind of balance everything out once you hit it with texture. All right, we're getting ready to shoot texture. I bought myself a little hopper. Um, this shoots consistently um, with a big overspray. It's like 50 bucks at Harbor Freight. So just do yourself a favor and go get it if you have a little air compressor. The only trick now is to take this drywall compound and dilute it to be a little bit on the runnier side. The only real trick here is get a larger and wider overlap. The more overlapping you do, go into the normal drywall, the less noticeable the transition will be. So in a way we have uh, an official bathroom that has plumbing and drainage. Walls. Walls. Um, a lot of very important features. <laughs> the lights that are on right now, well the switch is on the other side because this used to be a closet. So we need to move that switch to this side because typically the switches are as soon as you walk in. Mm -hmm. And then the convenient part about moving the toilet here is we have the fan blocked in here, but guess where it turns on? where the old bathroom used to be. We're gonna have to make some boxes here. I'm gonna go in the attic. We're gonna, I'm gonna get my phone. I'll call you and when you think I'm in proximity of this cable here. Are you just gonna like tap? I'm gonna tap, I'll okay. call you, I'll do, I'll do, I'll pull a little bit so you'll know all of these are dead wires. Um, and then at least I know where to put the new cable in. I'm gonna drill a hole. Let me know where it comes out, okay? I'm too far to the right. Yeah, you need to go just a little bit more. So like right here. Where am I? Way too far. You need to go six inches. Okay, I think that should be. Perfect. Can it snap? It's not hot. It's hard to breathe. Yeah, it's hard to breathe through this. You're nervous trying to walk on the trusses so you don't put your foot through the ceiling. Oh gosh. You're doing like American Ninja Warrior to like go I under trusses. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do with this? So this is these hot, wires. these are hot cables. That's power. The cables are running here or to the light. So 
now by putting the cables behind here, we're piggybacking and sending power into hmm. the new bathroom. So now we take this, this is called an old work box, so you don't need to put it towards and secure it into a stud. We usually do, it's called a new work box. An old work box basically means you have an old piece of job here, and then these butterflies keep it in intact. You're gonna use this drill, tighten this screw and that screw, and it's gonna open those butterflies and press this box again, against. Well, this is why I should wear safety glasses. Look at that. That's a DIY pendant light. I would just save a ton of money, like you just do it yourself. Take these caps, all the whites go to whites, the blacks blacks, and then the copper to copper. Wait, I don't get, just. Oh, you got it. No, no, it's just, it's just electrical. You'll figure it out. Okay, now it's about time to start hooking up our wires. Uh, here's the thing. There's a right way and there's tons of wrong ways to do it. Now, I'm not a licensed electrician, as you guys know. I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel, DIY stuff. But I can't tell you how many times I've referenced the same guy, the electrician channel on YouTube. Uh, it's called The Engineering Mindset, huge account. This video I've probably watched probably 20, 30 times. Every single time I hook one up, I forget, so I reference it. Have you tried it yet? No, I, this is, I, I followed the video exactly what I'm supposed to do. I just wanted to see. A natural so reaction I shot. the one that presses it? Yeah, you have the life insurance policy. You have one too. Yeah, but you know. You're just bigger. <laughs> just get shocked already. Ah! It works! Oh, hit the fan, hit the fan, hit the fan. Oh yeah. We got an official bathroom. Yes, it's son. It's all me. All you. I did it all. I got to admit that your choice of outfits are, are very specific. <laughs> On point. What would you say? Is this, would you say this is like the DIY remodel outfit or is this uh, more of like, I might go for a run, I might not? <laughs> I think it's a little bit of both okay. because who knows what's gonna happen later. Hey, we're homeowners, that's what we do. This is how we dress. <laughs> uh, so today's tile. Everything starts with a type of tile you're using. So you wanna show the tile that we got? Yes. We got this really pretty hexagon style and I think it's, it's not ceramic, it's porcelain. The type of fence that you're gonna use and depend on the type of tile and the uh, the subfloor that you're using. So we got this. This will also tell us the type of trowel we use. We'll need a quarter inch notch trowel. So this has a quarter inch. It makes a perfect notch when you set it. It spreads it and has no air bubbles and good adhesion. So these are spacers. I like smaller spacers. These are about an eighth of an inch thick. The wider they are, I think the uglier the grout gets dirty. The, 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 yeah, I think the wider is exactly, your, the grout gets dirtier. Yeah. It's not pretty. So we'll need one bucket with water with the mixing paddle on to clean it because it'll get gunked up all the time. We'll need one bucket with water to constantly mix and another bucket where all the mixture will take place. Okay, so for installing tile, you drop some on the ground, spread it out. How thick does it need to be? These quarter inch trowels is what creates the thickness. You can't go any thicker than that, as you can see. Then the back of the tile is very important. You have to scorch it. This is perfect, just a thin amount. You have a nice light little wiggle. Don't press it too hard. On every side of there's gonna be a piece of contact. And just like that, we're just gonna keep moving. The only part we're gonna be doing differently here right now is we're not gonna be doing these uh, cutting pieces. Reason why, that's usually a tedious part. I save it to the next day just to do it all at once. Are you using like a, do you have like a design that you're following or are you kind of just eyeballing? It? Well, there's really only one design with a hexagon, right? It's either this way or that way. Mm -hmm. Or do you want them to go the other way? Because the tile is going to be going that way. Maybe it'll be more uniform if we do that. So you're saying just turn, turned? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Sure. Because the idea of setting tile is very easy. Everything else is just making sure it's level. And right. the pattern doesn't sway. So if these were rectangular pieces, it would be easy because I just follow the straight wall. That's why I found out that when installing a hexagon like that, you almost have to do a clump at a time to make sure that this is linear and that's linear. We're gonna have to have like a safety violation here. I'm not wearing a hairnet. It's okay finding this in a sandwich, not in high school. <laughs> so 
the next day, they're all dry. All I gotta do is start filling up all these little transitional pieces. Cannot recommend a towel saw enough. You don't have to get the cream of the crop, the $800, $900 one. The only thing you need to look for, because there's some cheaper ones, some of the stuff doesn't have a sliding table. You want a sliding table. It reduces the friction, therefore the stuff doesn't crack on you. All right, so what you're doing by creating these radiuses, this is obviously for your toilet phalange or a funky wall, you're gonna basically anticipate the weak points for it to prevent from cracking in half. So by creating a radius, you're almost like stopping, it's like a controlled fire in a forest, right? You burn a line so the fire doesn't go past it. As we're coming up here, we actually have a radius. So now we'll just clean up the grinder and be good. What is what I'm talking about, son? Let's go. The tile sat for a few days and you really only need one day. To clean it, I'm just gonna use water, a little bit of a bristle sponge. Anything I can't hit, I'll just do a little bit of scraping just to get a nice clean line. Careful, don't chip this, this will chip. Grout time, folks. We're gonna mix it based off the directions that are in the back of this thing, very simple to follow. To apply it, we're gonna use a grout float, very easy, just apply it like a squeegee. Hi. Hi, sweetie pie. What do you think? Does the tie look good? Yeah. Okay, bye bye. We're gonna have to let this sit for about 30 minutes as per directions. Um, and then we'll start getting a fresh bucket of water and a sponge and lightly cleaning things up. And then we're gonna have to let it sit uh, for, I believe it's like 16 or 32 hours for the stuff to fully hard and cure. Hey, thanks so much for sticking on watching another one of our videos. Irene had to take off and make the kiddos lunch. So it's up to me to send you guys off. Thank you so much for watching this three-part series. Come back for next week for the third part where we build the vanity, where we do the crazy cool backsplash, where we're actually gonna do wallpaper, never done that before, and putting everything together. If you're brand the channel and you like videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell. That way you'll know exactly when we put these videos out and you won't miss any. Follow us with all the links will be down in the description below as well as our podcast where we record weekly, next door neighbors. We have a lot of fun. We discuss a lot of the background stuff on these projects. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye.